What's happening people, in this video I'm going to show you how to do a property viewing specifically for rent to rent. When we started out there was a lot of things that we uh, didn't do right. So basically we're just going to show you the things to look out for, so come on. show you what we now do in viewings or what we're going to do in the future so learning from the mistakes that we've made in the past what we're doing is going around this property this is one of the two HMOs we secured on a rent to rent if you want to see how we secured these two deals we documented the whole thing from start to finish so from calling the agents going on the viewings making the offers getting the contracts negotiating the contracts getting the, getting the deals accepted and then going on to getting the properties ready for tenants so if you haven't seen that then we'll put a link so you can you can click that and watch it also we're both shattered because we've been working like 20 hours a day seven days a week so if we look a bit tired just bear with us all right so first thing what do you wear so just wear smart casual you don't really want to wear anything like this well unless you've got a good relationship with the agent you pretty much wear what you want um, but one thing i'd say is don't dress like overly smart like in a proper suit and everything and you just look like you're on your first view in and you just seem inexperienced because they know like the people that do deals are just wearing what they want to wear all right so now that you're on the view in you should have already done like your research on the area is it a nice road is it close to shops first thing you want to check is just outside of the property what does it look like from the outside um, you know is there loads of rubbish everywhere is there a broken fence you want to check all of those things before you actually get into the property come to the viewings early um, make sure that you just have a look at the street as they say look at the guttering look at the roof is there any like broken gutters that be holding water causing problems inside the missing tiles discoloration another thing that you can do if you turn up early if you've got like leaflets you can put them into the doors of all the other houses on the road little things like that make sure you're checking in between the bricks have a look for cracks cracks are normally caused by subsidence the property's sinking make sure you look out for that so here's an example of quite a bad crack you can see here the property is under quite a bit of stress so movement happens in quite a lot of ways every crack can mean a different thing for example if you're upstairs in a terraced house and the crack is getting wider as you look up that would normally mean the two properties are pulling apart from each other. So yeah, every crack is just means different things. So definitely get a professional survey done, see if it can be treated. It's more serious if you're looking to buy the house. If you're looking to just do it on a rent to rent, it's less important because it would be the landlord's responsibility because you'd put that in the contract and you'd have a break clause meaning that you could get out. When you come in, you want to smell for damp. So you obviously know what damp smells like. And you want to check on the walls and everything. You should have a damp meter reader. You can get the 10, 20 pound ones that tell you how damp the surface is. Um, but if you spend a little bit more, they're just over a hundred quid, you can actually measure the surface and it will tell you if there's moisture underneath the surface. For example, with a water bottle, if you use the 10 pound one, it will tell you that it's dry. But with the, the one that's more expensive, it will tell you that there's moisture inside the water bottle. So you might want to get one of those. Yeah, we'll put links to those in the uh, in the description. Yeah. So let's check out the rooms. This is probably a bad room to uh, start on. It shouldn't really look like this, but um, yeah. So when you come into the room, again, you want to check for damp, but also there's there's a lot of things that you want to check. So if the walls need painting, calculate how long painting that's going to take when you when you're doing your numbers. Skirting boards. Is there cracks in the skirting boards? Is there like gaps that you need to fill in around the door frames again is there gaps that you need to fill in you it's quite easy to fill in you just buy something called cork put a link to that as well yeah you want to check if the curtains need replacing if the 
blinds need replacing. Because you're taking this property on a rent to rent, you're not actually buying it, you're not owning it. You don't want to do too much work. You don't want to put too much money into it. Obviously, you, you're going to want to make the money back quick. Also, you want to calculate how much the furniture is going to cost. So what you need to put into the room. So bed, wardrobe, bedside table, lamps, things like that. Also, check the carpets as well. Carpets like this, you can change it, but some carpets, it, it just needs a bit of a clean. So it depends what your budget is. If you, you can budget for the new carpet and you can get it all done in, in the, the time that you wanted to, then get it done. If not though, something like this, we'll just hoover it up and then use Rug Doctor and to get the carpet cleaned. If you can, don't re it. it. Takes too much time, costs some money. Even if it does look quite bad, there's things that you can do to make it better to stay clean on it. Maybe put a rug over a certain patch. Saves time and money. So when you go into all of the room, check all of the things that I just mentioned there. So skirting boards, if it needs painting, what furniture it needs. Check for damp, check for everything. Stay in a room for literally as long as you need. You can be in each room for like at least 10 minutes. Just make sure you check everything. If the rooms have got sinks in there, Turn the hot tap on, see how long it takes for the, the water to get hot. It's getting hot already, so you know that the boiler's working. Getting into the bathroom. Check the shower goes hot. Check the, uh, the water pressure. You don't want to be taking on the deal and then realising that you need to get a whole new shower, uh, especially if you don't budget for it. So when you come into the kitchen, check things like the oven works, check all of the kitchen appliances, washing machines, if there's a dishwasher, see if they turn on. Uh, if it's like quite an old property, then it's likely that the appliances are quite old as well. So just to make sure you check all things like that because you don't want to take a deal on and then realise that the cooker needs replacing, for example. The kitchen is like the main part of the house, especially if you're not doing HMO. But with a HMO, you still want it to look nice because there's one kitchen for however many people you got there. If the kitchen looks really old, it's normally quite cheap to make it look good. For example, in the other house, we used this film. It's like a vinyl that you put over the cupboards. Um, I'll show you a little clip of what that looks like before and after. All right, so especially when you're viewing a HMO, the room sizes, you have to make sure the room sizes are right. So we use a laser measurer. It needs to be uh, at least 70 square foot or uh, 6.51 square meters. With a ceiling like this, you could you need to measure the floor, but you can only measure it up to where it comes to 1.5 meters. So say for example that was here, you can only measure that area here. That bit won't count towards it. And also check check. Say for example the property's already got a HMO license and you're trying to take it on. Check when when the license was issued. Because say for example if it was issued in 2016. The law changed about the room size in 2018, so you definitely want to check that because if you take it on for like six years or something and they renew the license and then you've got a problem on your hands because you might have a room that you can't actually legally let out. So yeah, definitely check that. So yeah, when you're checking the rooms upstairs, check the floor as well. So you see when I walk over some bits, you can hear that it's got creaky floorboards. So not only is that a problem for this room, but it's a problem for the room downstairs as well because they're just going to complain. And also, when you're walking around, you want to sort of press your feet a bit, see if it's any any parts are soft. Because that could just mean rotten floorboards. So just listen out for it and feel out for it wherever you go. You want to come and check the electric box, fuse box. See, this one looks quite new plastic. So that tells me the house. Has already been rewired, probably doesn't need to be looked at. I'll show you an example of what the old fuse boxes used to look like. Uh, but yeah, if you get one of the old fuse boxes, your house might need rewiring, which can cost thousands. So you definitely want to check this. And check the, the boiler, when, when was the boiler last serviced? Make sure you check that, because boilers can cost a lot as well. As you're walking around, you might want to check the smoke detectors and the fire alarms work. Bring your clipboard so that you can take notes. What we do is we bring a frequently asked question sheet with our contact details on there to leave with the agent. It's also got pictures of how we dress the properties as well. So that's always a good thing to, to leave the agent that's professional. Once you give that to them, you've got your checklist here underneath. So this is your property viewing sheet. So here you can put the property address 
um, and write all of the information about the, the viewing. What we used to do in the past was try to remember everything and then take notes after. But then we, sh after doing loads of viewings each day, we just start getting lost. Uh, so when we put in the office in, we start to forget little things. So check every single bedroom, just check all of it. Another thing that we like to do when we're on a viewing is film or take pictures. We prefer to film because then you remember what it's like in the property, remember everything like, like the actual floor plan and everything and also makes good content for YouTube as well. So, uh, so yeah, you want to check all of the work that's required. I think the main thing that I've learned is when doing a viewing, check everything that needs to be done and also budget for that. So you also want to check how long everything's going to take as well. So if you're going to paint every single room, if you're doing it yourself, you want to work out how long it's actually going to take to do it all. And if you're paying someone to do it, then obviously put that in your numbers as well. So if you want one of these property viewing sheets, which has got everything you should check. This is specifically for HMOs, these ones. Make sure you comment below and then yeah, we'll get one to you. So when you're taking on a HMO on a rent to rent, you want to put as least money in as possible, but you still want to make it look good for tenants. There'll be things in the properties that are actually salvageable, like for example, this desk. But in most properties you'll see, um, they'll normally have like half decent beds that you could sort of use. Wardrobes, every one or two wardrobes you could use, bedside tables, lamps. And then these ones that we took on, well, all the beds were all mashed up and all the like, sofas were not nice. So we just basically got rid of everything. But if there was a property where there was half decent stuff we just keep it obviously and when you're looking to get stuff as well like art you can go on like online auctions where you can get things a lot cheaper like spock uh, or you can go to charity shops that sort of thing but if you're running low on time ikea is pretty good it's all cheap and you just get next day delivery are the windows double glazed uh, over there you can see there's some damp this could be caused by like a plant grown in guttering, which will hold all the water and then it'll eventually seep into the walls. Uh, but in this case, I think there's actually a missing bit of brickwork from the outside. But yeah, you always want to double check that because it could get really bad. It could end up getting big leaks. Also check if there's any large trees close by to the property. The roots can actually lift up pavements over time. They can damage drains near your property. They can damage the foundations and it's not as simple as just cutting it down. That can cause more problems sometimes. It can actually cause subsidence. So after all that, if you really like the property, you want to make an offer. Still, you want to check the place at night, check the area, check the people, see if there's any crackheads walking around at stupid o'clock in the morning. It could be like a local brothel, like right next door. It could be sirens going on all night. It could be a lot of crime, there could be gangs. So you, you really want to know the area. So this is our biggest takeaways and what we've learned, some bullet points. Main thing for me is checking absolutely everything staying in the property as long as possible when doing a viewing just so that you don't miss a single thing and also calculating how long everything will take so it's not just about how much everything's going to cost it's about how much time it's going to cost as well how quick can you get everything done that's been the biggest thing for me yeah so don't be afraid to really really take your time because if you don't take your time you won't be able to work out your numbers which means you won't be able to make an offer which means if you're not taking your time, you probably are just wasting everybody else's time. So yeah, the biggest things that I'd say to check is a boiler, fuse box, and check if anything is salvageable. So anything that you can reuse, like beds, anything that looks half decent that you can make look good. And then you can work out your numbers properly uh, and also work out how long everything's gonna take as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe, comment below. If you have any questions, if we know the answer, we'll reply straight away. If not, we'll put you on to the right person who can answer it for you. And also comment below, what do you want to see next? What are you struggling with rent to rent? What do you want to know? So we've got more ideas to put out more content for you guys. So yeah, Perfect. see you later. Perfect.